Whether you're modding Skyrim for the first time, or want to avoid crashes and bugs during modding, this video will show you how to do it right the first time, so that your master files are clean before you start to mod your game. So let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is come to your Skyrim installation, right click, go to manage, and uninstall. Once it's finished uninstalling, go to your file explorer, right click, and go to documents. Once your documents folder is open, look for my games and Skyrim special edition, right click, and delete. Next, go to the drive for which you had Skyrim installed on, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and Skyrim Special Edition. Go ahead and delete this folder as well. Now that Skyrim has been completely wiped from your system, go ahead and click Install. While this is installing, open up your web browser and type in SKSE. And this will bring you to the SKSE Silverlock.org website. Go ahead and click on the link. Once you're inside, download the current Anniversary Edition build. While that's downloading, open up another tab and type in Loot into your web browser. Once you get to the Loot website, which is github.com, scroll down to the Loot Win64 7-zip file. Or you can click on the .exe executable and things will install for you automatically, just like any other program. But for me, I'm going to download the Win64.7-zip. The next thing you want to do is go over to Skyrim Special Edition Nexus and type in Mod Organizer 2 and click the link. Files and download Mod Organizer 2. Once Skyrim has finished downloading, go ahead and click and press the play button. Next, go into Options and set your screen resolution and the rest of your graphics settings. I go ahead and max everything out. I also use full screen and not borderless windowed mode. And click Play. This will start up your game for the very first time, which is necessary in order to mod your game. Once it's loaded up, go ahead and click Quit. Now you are ready to install the SKSE file system. Minimize, go to your Downloads folder, find SKSE, right click, and Extract Files. OK. Open up the file. And here is all your data files for the SKSE program. The next thing you want to do is go back to your Steam library, right click, manage, and browse local files. This will automatically open up your Skyrim directory. And the only files you need to drop in are the DLLs, EXE, and go ahead and drop everything in the data folder in your Skyrim directory. The SRC files are only useful for programmers, but I like to go ahead and drop the files in anyways. Once this is done, close out your files. The next step now is to minimize your Steam library, go back to your downloads, and install Mod Organizer 2. I like to change my file path to a different hard drive. You may choose to do so at this point. And create a desktop shortcut. Install. 
and go ahead and launch Mod Organizer 2. When you get to the new instance screen, you have an option of creating a global instance and a portable instance. If you choose to create a global instance, things will be saved to your C drive and not the directory that you have installed Skyrim 2. This is good if you like to have multiple games running on one installation of Mod Organizer. You can have multiple instances of Skyrim modding on the same installation of Mod Organizer. Or you can use the portable instance which saves everything to the directory that your Skyrim game is installed to, which for me is the E drive, and it will not create anything in another drive. The only issue with creating a portable instance is that the mod organizer will only mod your Skyrim game, meaning you cannot have any other games or any other modding profiles for Skyrim on the same installation of mod organizer. If you would like to install multiple games to mod, or would like to have multiple instances of Skyrim modding, all you simply have to do is install Mod Organizer 2 again. That way you have two of the same programs, but each one is running a different game or a different Skyrim modding instance. I like to have everything saved to OneDrive, and I'm only going to be using this to mod Skyrim, so I'm going to choose the portable instance. And as you can see, Mod Organizer has already recognized that you have installed the SKSE plugin. So let's go ahead and run the game and make sure everything is working properly. Beautiful. Now exit your game. Now open back up your web browser and type in SSE edit and you will see the Skyrim special edition editing tool go ahead and download now once it's finished downloading go to where your Skyrim directory is installed for me it's on my E drive right click and create new folder title this folder SSE edit open the folder, then go to your downloads, move the SSE edit download file into this folder, right click and extract files. OK. Once this is done, you can go back to your downloads folder and delete the 7-zip file. And you can also delete the 7-zip file here as well. Open this up, and now you have your SSE edit installation. Move this folder over here to be used later. If Mod Organizer 2 asks you to link the Nexus website, go ahead and click OK. The next thing you want to do is go to your File Explorer on the same drive that you have installed Skyrim and create another folder next to the SSE Edit folder and title this Loot. Once you've done that, Open the file, go to your downloads, and drag the loot installation file into that folder. You can now delete these two or one seven zip downloads. Once that's completed, right click, seven zip, extract files, OK. And you may delete the download. Open this up, and there you go. You now have your loot ready to go. Now the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and attach your SSE edit to your Bond Organizer 2 installation. Click on the down arrow, edit, and go to add executable. Add from file, SSE edit, and click on the SSE edit auto clean. Apply and OK. Now you have your SSE Edit in your Skyrim Mod Organizer 2 installation. Do the same thing with Loot.
Apply and OK. Now you're all set up. And here is one of the most important steps to make sure that your Skyrim game doesn't get as many crashes or as bugs during modding. And this is what the SSE Edit Auto Clean feature does. So go ahead and run this now. Once this has opened, click on Update and click OK. This may take some time to complete. OK, once the auto clean has finished, simply click the X and run the application again. Now you have your update file cleaned. The next thing that you're going to clean is the Dawnguard ESM and click OK. I'm going to go grab some cereal. Once it's finished, go ahead and exit out again and click Run. Now click on your hearthfires.esm and OK. Once that's finished, exit out and now we can go down to our loot.exe, click Run, click on Update Master List, and we can see which plugins still need to be cleaned. Let's start by cleaning the donguard.esm first. This ESM file must be cleaned manually, and there is a very nice guide by clicking here that will bring up a window that shows you exactly how to do it and it's very simple. Exit out loot and open up the manual SS edit. Right click, select none, select Dawn Guard, and click OK. Once this has finished, click on the plus sign next to Dawn Guard ESM and scroll down to cell and cell block number 5. Once you've opened this up, click on Subblock 3 and click on Riften Ragged Flagon. Scroll down to XEZN Encounter Zone. Go all the way to the right to where it says Riften Ratway Zone and right click and remove. A warning will pop up, but it's quite alright. Just click yes. And there you go. Your Dawnguard ESM has now officially been cleaned. You can now exit out of the program and click OK. And just to make sure, you can go back to your loot, run loot, and you can now see that all four of your ESM files are now clean and ready to go. Now let's jump to Dragonborn. So let's go back to SSE Auto Clean run and click on the dragonborn.esm and OK. Once this is finished, exit out again, run autoclean once more, and now we can click on the fish.esm and OK. And continue to do this for the rest of the ESM files. Once the files have all been cleaned, we can now go back to loot and check and make sure that everything is clean and good to go. Now that your game is all set up for modding, let's close this out, close our two folders, go back and highlight SKSE, and now let's start installing the essential mods for Skyrim Special Edition. The first essential mod is Sky. UI. Click on the Mod Manager download link, download, 
If you get this message, click Always Allow Links to Download from Mod Organizer. And there you go, it's downloaded. The next essential mod is going to be SSE Display Tweaks. Go ahead and download. And this mod requires the address library and the Microsoft C++ redistributable. You can middle mouse button both of these to go to the website and download. The one that you use for the C++ redistributable is going to be the X64. Go ahead and click this now and install. When it's finished installing, it's going to ask you, do you want to restart your computer? It is up to you whether or not to do that now or later. And then of course, install the address library with Mod Manager just as normal. Now that you have restarted your computer and installed all the mods, there is one last mod that you're going to need, and that is the SkyUI Flashing Save Game Fix. Go ahead and download this file now and install. Once your Flashing Save Game Fix is installed, come over to the folder icon, click on Open Mods folder, SSE Display Tweaks, SKSE, Plugins, and SSE Display Tweaks Configuration File Settings. This must be configured properly for display tweaks to work correctly. I am going to be running the game in full screen, so this is going to be set to true. If you are running in windowed mode, you will simply set this to false, and then choose your option of whether borderless full screen or just windowed mode. The next thing to set is your resolution scale. This is your native resolution of the monitor that you're running, and make sure the resolution scale is set to 1. The next thing to set up is enable or disable VSync. I like to have VSync enabled, so this is set to true. If you do not want VSync enabled, set this to false. And you're all set up. File and save. Let's go ahead and run loot one last time. Update and sort plugins. Everything is fine. We are now finally finished. We have SkyUI installed. We have SSE display tweaks which allows you to run in a higher frame rate than 60. We have our flashing save game fix and we have our address library for SKSE plugins which a lot of other mods use, so it's a very good base to start with. And we also have all of our plugins nice and clean. So that way, whenever you install other mods and you do get some bugs or crashes, you know that it's not your base files. This is the very best way that I believe to start out your Skyrim game for modding. So now that it's all completed, let's go ahead and start up the game. Thanks for watching everybody, I really hope this video helped out, and good luck on your modding ventures.